Hello and welcome into another exciting week of Pick 6. I'm your host, Rishi Sadie. Let's meet our new panel this week. I'm Brian, and I'm not shaving till my Steelers lose. I'm Marshall, and I figure someone, at some point, has got to go 6-0 on this panel. So why can't it be me? I'm Adam, and since me and Reed over here won last week, we get this week's trophy. Yeah, like you said, I'm Reed. I don't know if I'll be able to handle the pressure of winning last. Let's dive right into the Ravens and the Steelers. Steelers still leading the AFC North with a 3-0 record. Brian, are you going to have to shave that beard this week? I think I am, Reese. Charlie Batch played pretty well last week, but let's face it, the Buccaneers just aren't that good. I think the Ravens' D is going to terrorize Batch, um, taking the Ravens in this one. No surprise, this is going to be a game of defense, because these two teams' offenses haven't produced that much, and their defenses have been looking really good. Uh, Flacco needs to be a little more consistent, but I think if he can find Anquan Bolden again like he did last week, he can overcome the Steelers and uh, Ravens win it. I'm going to pick the Steelers in this one. It's going to be a close, low-scoring game, but I'm going to give it to them because of the home field advantage. A little backstory to this game. When the NFL was making their schedule last year, the Ravens specifically requested not to play at Pittsburgh in a Monday night or Sunday night game because they hate the primetime atmosphere. Well, guess what? You're the Ravens. You're going to get that atmosphere this week no matter what time of day it is. Before I make this pick, I'd like to uh, congratulate the Steelers fans on going 3-0 despite Ben Roethlisberger playing. And uh, I think if Roethlisberger was playing, they would win this game. But he's not, so I look for Baltimore to eat this one out. Maybe by a field goal at the end. Uh, Reed, on behalf of the Steeler Nation, thanks. Uh, we got the Chicago Bears joining us also at 3-0. Uh, welcome to the club. Anyway, let's move on to a game, uh, Arizona at San Diego. Arizona's 2-1. and one. I gotta be honest, I don't really know why. Uh, San Diego, they all start out kind of slow. Do you think uh, they turn around this week, or is Arizona actually going to go to 3-1? and one? I'm picking the upset here. Well, I guess you could call it an upset, even though Arizona has the better record, but I'm sure most people think the Chargers are going to win. I'm taking Arizona. I think this is going to be the week that Derek Anderson finally gets on the same page as star wideout Larry Fitzgerald. The Chargers have been a disappointment thus far through the first few weeks. I'm taking Arizona. San Diego has been incredibly inconsistent this far, and I just want to see which team's going to come out and actually play this week. And I think this week it'll be the good San Diego team. I think Phillip Rivers is finally going to get in sync with his receivers. I think he's going to have a big field day against this past defensive Arizona that's been shaky. And even though Ryan Matthews is questionable for this week, I think San Diego pulls that at home. You know what? I think this week could be the week both quarterbacks get in, uh, get in sync with their star wide receivers. But I think that means this game can come down to special teams. Arizona has that X factor with Rod Stevens Howling, a pick graduate, returning punts. You saw what he did last week. If he does something like that again, this game could swing in Arizona's favor. I like Arizona in this one. Uh, last week, San Diego did not show me much. Uh, they lost on to Seattle. Uh, the offense was pretty stagnant at times, unless they had to get it going, which was at the very end of the game. And uh, Arizona actually has Beanie Wells coming back this week. Uh, he was back last week, but he's, he's finally fully healthy. And I think this is a guy who can be one of the more dynamic backs in the league, so I look for them to take this one. Okay, let's talk about the juiciest match of the week. <clears throat> Donovan's returning to Philly. The Redskins are taking on the Eagles. Marshall, I think you called an injury knee last week for starting uh, Michael Vick. I don't know if he's going to take that back. But uh, any other storylines you guys see this week besides the whole McNabb returning to Philly? Hey, how come nobody in the media is talking about Michael Vick? But seriously, Vick has been outstanding <laughs> thus far. Um, I, Mc, Donovan McNabb is a gamer, but the Redskins lost to the Rams last week. Just imagine what Vic's going to do to this defense. Eagles win. All right, look, I've been telling anybody who will listen to me for the past week that the Eagles are stupid because they really should be starting Kevin Cobb, who's their quarterback of the future. That being said, Michael Vick is looking really good. And I don't want to speak too soon because of the defenses they've played, but I think he really could have a great season if he keeps going like this. And this probably will be another semi-easy game for him because, I mean, if Sam Bradford can come in and beat the, uh, the Redskins, how's Vic not going to be able to do it? I have no doubt that the Eagles will win this game. My only hope is that the Eagles fans will show some respect and give Donovan McNabb the applause he deserves. i got to go with the Eagles in this game. McNabb's coming back to town with his tail in between his legs with an inferior Redskins team. Michael Vick, he's, be, he's playing like he's being chased by a pack of wild dogs. And by wild dogs, I mean Philly fans. Um, he's playing lights out. And when he's playing lights out on the same page as Deshaun Jackson, uh, who's caught a long touchdown from him every week so far, it's going to be very, very hard for the Redskins to win this game because they're just not as good. I'm pretty sure after this week, Marshall is again going to be calling Andy Reid an idiot, but this time for trading Donovan McNabb to the well, Redskins. Um, 
I don't know. I like him in this game. I, I think he's going to have that revenge factor. Uh, he wants to do it. He's a, a quarterback who can get things done in pressure situations. Uh, the Philly fans are going to be on him. Uh, I just hope they applaud him at the beginning of the game. Uh, if they don't, it's pretty disgraceful, considering he's the best quarterback in the franchise history. Okay, let's talk about Reed's Chicago Bears. 3-0, the last undefeated team left in the NFC. They're traveling to the Giants. Uh, Giants might be kind of a mess right now. They really need a victory. Do you think they're going to get it? Oh, Rishi, with Eli Manning facing off against Jay Cutler, this game might set the NFL record for most interceptions thrown. But the Bears' defense last Monday night showed that they're, they're a pretty good defense. They're menacing, featuring Julius Peppers, Lance Briggs, Brian Urlacher. I think they're going to thrash Eli and the Giants in this one. This game is a matchup of two teams that have been rather surprising this season, but in very different ways. The Bears have started off great. Cutler is, looks like he's shaken off that terrible season last year. Uh, whereas the Giants are just a complete mess. Brown Jacobs can't keep his helmet on his head. Eli Manning can't throw to the right people. And I just don't see them winning this game. I think Julius Peppers and the Bears D, they look invigorated. They're going to harass Manning all day long. And Bears are going to win this one. At this point, i got to go with the Bears. They're on a hot streak with Cutler, who's definitely played a lot better this year. i got to hand it to him. Um, Eli Manning has thrown six picks so far this year. At this point, the Giants might be better off trying to start the other Manning brother, Cooper. He doesn't even play football, so you got to go with the Bears. Yeah, Bears, obviously. Uh, you have two teams that are moving in opposite directions right now. Uh, Chicago's looking better on both sides of the ball this year. Giants are looking worse on both sides of the ball this year. Uh, bodes well for the Bears. I'm taking them. All right, a clean sweep, uh, the most screaming we've had today. Let's talk about the Monday night matchup. Uh, New England and the Dolphins. AFC East divisional matchup. What do you guys think? Well, it should be a pretty exciting atmosphere in Miami on Monday night. And the Dolphins always give the Patriots fits. Ronnie Brown likes to go off on the, under the Monday night lights. But you know what? That being said, I don't think they can contain the Patriots' high-octane passing offense. I think Brady, Randy Moss, and Wes Welker lead the Patriots to a close victory. This game is going to be another close one, as it always is between these two. Um, one thing that stands out for me is how inconsistent the Patriots have been so far. They romped in week one, and in the last two weeks, they haven't looked that great. Whereas the Dolphins have impressed me so far. Even in their loss last week to the Jets, Chad Henney looked real solid. And he actually has some receivers to throw now with uh, Marshall and Bess. So I think that um, with their home field advantage, I think Miami is going to be able to squeak this one out against the Patriots. This is definitely the hardest game of the week to pick for me. Um, I'm going to give the slight edge to Miami because they're playing at home on Monday night, so they get the, the edge of the crowd factor. Uh, like everybody has said, Moss and Welker and Brady are going to have a big game against Miami's defense, but what people might not realize is that this year New England's defense is 27th in the league, so definitely look for Ronnie Brown, Ricky Williams, Brandon Marshall to have good games against them. Yeah, I think this game's going to be a shootout, uh, a high-scoring affair. I look for New England to take this one uh, at the end of the day. Uh, Miami's defense has been turning the ball over, and that's, that's been the main reason why they've been winning. But I think New England's offense is too good uh, for them to, to give the ball to Miami. Uh, so at the end of the day, I look for New England to take this one. Okay, we're going to introduce a new feature this week, an upset special. Take it away, Brian. For my upset, I'm taking the Raiders over the Texans in Oakland. Here's why. Matt Schaub has been very underwhelming thus far this year, and now his top receiver, Andre Johnson, maybe the best in the game, might not even play. And you know what? I think the Raiders play better with Bruce Gradkowski under center, as he will be Sunday. I think the Raiders win. For my pick, I'm going out on a limb and taking the Niners over the Falcons. The Niners have looked pretty woeful so far, but they've got to win sometime, right? Why can't it be this week? For my upset special, I'm going to take Buffalo over the New York Jets. Here's why. The New York Jets have been talking a lot this season, and I know I like them for that. Sometime, though, they're going to overlook somebody. It's going to be Buffalo. C.J. Spiller might have a huge day against them. My upset special is St. Louis in this one over Seattle. Uh, they're at home. Seattle is a team that historically is not good away from home. Um, and they're, they're not huge, huge underdogs. They're one-point underdogs, so I think this is one they can pull out. Those are our official picks for this week. We had some upset picks. Tune back in next week see how everybody did. For Pick 6, I'm Rishi Sadie. Thanks for watching. Ooh! <laughs> Light. Uh, get me out of this place. I wonder how it looks. That looks the Oakland Raiders. <laughs>
Turn it back on. Turn it back on. You're killing me. This is like 20 minutes of tape to log and capture before you even edit. Yep. Sorry. Right. New England in this one. Um, the way Miami's been winning games is their defense has been turning the ball over a bunch. But uh, I don't think that New England's de or New England's offense, sorry, uh, is going to be giving the ball much to them. Um, I, th I look. God, let me just start off. Yeah. I was like, so I was just trying to turn the ball over a bunch. Yeah, I realize. I realize. What? I was like, I was just stumbling. Hmm. All right, all right. Let the man. Let the man.